Here are five things to consider before you start shopping for your home in Alameda. Hey, and welcome back to our channel. My name is Hans Strazina. This is my wife, Kristen, with the Gunderman Group at Keller Williams Luxury International. And today we're talking about the five things you need to know before you start your move and shopping experience for a home here in Alameda. Kristen and I each moved here independently well over a decade ago and have stayed because of some of the most amazing things here in the island city we're excited to share with you. If you get value out of this content, make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. We've also got a playlist, which I'll link up here to other Alameda specific content so you can check it out there. So thanks again for being here and let's dive into the list. The first thing you should know about Alameda is that despite the fact that it's an island city, it does have a lot of really distinct neighborhoods. And each of these neighborhoods, whether it's the West End or Bay Farm Island or the Gold Coast, you're going to experience a totally different feel in each one. The houses are gonna be slightly different, the home styles are gonna be very different, density will be different, walkability, what kind of commercial districts you're next to, that's all gonna vary from neighborhood to neighborhood. So one of the things that Hans and I have done is based on our experience living here, we've put together an Alameda neighborhood guide. So we'll link to that below and you can go sign up and take a look at our in-depth analysis through that neighborhood guide, we also talk about where to eat, where to drink, what to do in each of these distinct neighborhoods. So go check that out down in the description of the video. And as our second point here, one of the most important things to know about the buying and selling process is it is a small island. It is pretty insular. The agent community, there's kind of the on island and off island agents. Um, and there are some really prominent listing agents. And why that's important to you as a potential buyer is you're probably gonna encounter one of these top five to 10 people on a regular basis. You're gonna to start to see their houses, the price points they work in, the styles that they work in, and getting to know uh, what their styles are from a pricing, negotiating, disclosure standpoint, etc., will really help give you an edge on and know how to write an offer and how to potentially negotiate uh, so that you can be as successful in those negotiations as possible because I promise you everyone has a style and a way of doing business here. So if you can start to identify and have an agent who helps you identify those nuances, you will become a lot more successful faster in your home shopping experience. As a side note, some of those relationships with those top agents can often yield off-market opportunities. Now, I've done plenty of other videos on off-markets and other things, um, so I won't bore you with it on this one. However, just know that they are very seasonal, and especially as we get to the latter part of the year, generally after Halloween, you would expect to see a few more of those pop up. Um, so if you are shopping during the uh, holiday season, it is important to know how to get access to that kind of inventory. So the third thing that you should know before buying a home here in Alameda is that there are two point of sale ordinances. So these are two things that need to happen every time the home trades from a seller over to a buyer. So the first one of these is a gas shutoff valve, and this is something that a plumber will install onto your gas meter so that in the event of some seismic activity, it will automatically shut off the gas supply to your home, therefore reducing the risk for fire. Those run about $500 and can be done by any plumber here in town. The second point of sale ordinance is the sewer lateral. So this is something that you'll see throughout the East Bay and the sewer lateral is what connects the home to the city's sewer line. And this needs to be in compliance and so typically you'll see a bid for this if it needs to be done in the disclosure packet before you purchase the home. Usually these run about five to $10,000 depending on the distance from the home to the city's sewer line. If it's not already in compliance, then the buyer who typically takes this on will need to put a deposit into escrow and then we'll typically have six months to complete the work for this. So speaking of things that you can't wait six months to do after you close, insurance is another really important part of this. That's our fourth uh, part of this list. Simply put, 
while Alameda doesn't have fire zones, which is what most people seem to think uh, is a really big insurance risk in the East Bay, we do have uh, liquefaction zones and of course flood zones, given that we're in an island. Plus the fact that a lot of our housing stock is very old, was built in the 20s, uh, the 30s, or even earlier. And a lot of insurance companies don't like insuring that kind of property. So you wanna make sure that you get quotes, you get a couple of opinions, frankly, as to uh, what you have to pay for insurance because it can be significant in some parts of the island if you only stick with certain insurers. Uh, we have a couple of people who have historically given us and our clients really, really great rates. Uh, so we can definitely get that for you if you're in need of it, but make sure that you do not buy that house or write an offer without checking on insurance first. The fifth thing you should know before buying a home in Alameda is that the city has a historic homes list, and that's every home that was built before 1940. This is a big list of all the homes by street name and the associated designation that it falls under. So a little bit of history about this historic homes list. Prior to 1972, a lot of people were coming in and purchasing homes in the city, knocking down the house, and then building an apartment complex. Well, sooner or later, people started to catch on to this and realized how important it was to really preserve the architectural richness and history of the city. And so in 1972, the Alameda Architectural Preservation Society formed and created this list. So what you need to know about this as it relates to buying a home in Alameda is that if the home that you're looking at purchasing falls onto this list, you need to look at the designation that it falls under and understand that if you want to make any changes to the home, typically this has to do more with the facade or the front of the home. It's going to need to go through an additional review process by this preservation society just to ensure that any changes you're making are not going to change the architecture of the building in any substantial way. So things like front porches, windows, uh, stairs, uh, grading on the lot, any number of things can fall under this list. So make sure you do that research. And finally, our bonus section is uh, has to somewhat do with porches is the fact that Alameda has an incredibly small town vibe from just people hanging out on their front porch as opposed to their back one, having porch concerts, street and block parties, all the way up to uh, closing down Park Street for uh, art and wine fairs, car shows, the, uh, one of the longest 4th of July parades in uh, the United States that's three miles long, has 2,500 participants and up to 60,000 people in attendance as spectators. Uh, Halloween attracts thousands and thousands of trick-or-treaters from all across the East Bay, all over the island, for the Gold Coast, Bronze Coast, East End, all over. Uh, Christmas Tree Lane, which is the 3200 block of Thompson. There are these really exciting little uh, fun community things that some of which are very impromptu, some of which are very planned and organized, um, but you just get that vibe in Alameda. We don't ever go really anywhere on the island anymore without at least seeing one person that we know whether it's we're running in the morning with our dog or we're going to Trader Joe's or Encinal Market or we're going up to Almanac Brewery for a beer, we're almost always running into someone. And that's one of the most wonderful parts of living here is simply you know your community, you know your neighbors, and it's people who all wanna pour back into the community in various ways. So make sure that that is for you before you come <laughs> uh, move here because that is definitely a big selling point of this of this community in uh, for a lot of people. As always, thank you so much for listening in. If you liked what you heard, make sure that you like and subscribe and don't forget about the Alameda Neighborhood Guide, which is right below. We look forward to seeing you on the next one.